And how's it going, folks? Welcome to Off the Jones Sports. I'm joined by special guest, Mr. Terrence Tolliver. How's it going this evening, Mr. Uh, Tolliver? How's it going? All right, you, you can hear me uh, well? I hear you. Okay, cool, cool. All right, I can hear you. So, I wanted to bring you on today, uh, talk about LSU. They play Sunday, 6 o'clock. Um, and then maybe we can get into maybe what you've been up to lately. You know, uh, not too long ago, you uh, played for LSU uh, back in, what, between – 2008 and 2010, 2007. 2007. Right, right, right. So, what what have you been up to since then? I know you 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 know you went to the pros for a little bit. Uh, I, I don't remember which teams you tried out for, uh, but you also played for in the CFL as well. Um, so, tell me, uh, what was those experience like, and what? Were you able to venture to after life, after football, playing football? Well, in 2011, I didn't get drafted, but uh, you know, I, I started off with the Texans. I uh, got waved out with a concussion, and then I, I had some stints. Had a stint with uh, Detroit and Chicago. I was in the league for four years, and then I played in the CFL for four years, from 2015 to 2019, um, and now. Well, I was coaching two years. I also coached two years in uh, Hearn, Texas, offense coordinator, wide receivers coach. And now I'm just a um, stay-at-home dad now. Awesome. That, that's got to be the life, a stay-at-home dad. I think that's everybody's uh, dream as a man to be a stay-at-home dad. Uh, how is that life as a stay-at-home dad? And uh, being able to you know, be there for your, your, your child and your wife, uh, you know, just being there every day and watching them grow from, from the time she was born right now, she, she's walking, she's starting to talk right now. So it's an awesome thing, man. I love being a girl dad, like Kobe Brown would say. And right. And, and like you said, you, uh, were a coach, uh, at, on the high school level, right? It was the high school level. Texas. Right. And it, And you were a former uh, offense coordinator, is that was that is that right? Offense coordinator, coach, Dan Hearn, for two years. All right. So you come from a long line of LSU wide receivers, and I would consider you, you know, if not top ten, definitely top fifteen wide receivers in LSU history. Uh, you know, you, you did play in an era where uh, the Les Miles era where it was predominantly running the ball. So you might have not got much receptions, right, uh, targets thrown your way. But I, I know you made the most of it. I, I still remember your catch against Florida, uh, your game-winning catch against Florida. That was one of my favorite plays ever uh, by you. Uh, so you look at this – LSU wide receiver uh, group right now in Kayshawn Boutte, Brian Thomas, Jack Bess. I mean, the list just goes on. Chris Hilton. I mean, it's absolutely stacked. Uh, this is kind of one of the things I wanted to talk to you with first. I just wanted to get your perspective on just how talented this group is and um, how LSU keeps continue, continues – the wide receiver tradition and how talented it is year by year. A wide receiver, you um, LSU recruits itself, um, but I really haven't paid much attention to the wide receiver group uh, right now because I've been uh, busy focusing on my, you know, raising my child. But I have been following a little bit about it, and I do know Kayshawn Butte. Uh, that's about the only guy right now, but. From my the things I'm reading and hearing, you know, they got a really talented uh, young young nucleus there. And uh, I see Brian Kelly. I hear Brian Kelly talk about it all the time. How you know that wide receiver group is strong, and we always have a good wide receiver group. But 
You know, it's all about, you know, who, who we have to get the ball to. That's the great thing right now. We don't know who's going to get the ball to those guys at this point. And right. And, and you experienced the quarterback battle yourself during your tenure at LSU. You know, you went through Andrew Hatch, Jordan Jefferson, Jared Lee. Um, was there was there somebody else? I can't remember, but those are the three main quarterbacks I can think of off the top of my head in your era. Um, so you see a quarterback battle right now with Jaden Daniels, Garrett Nussmeyer, um, and Brian Kelly chose not to name the starter out in public, but he has his starter. Uh, are you familiar with those two quarterbacks? And do you have a certain opinion on who is going to start for LSU on Sunday? I really don't have an opinion on it. I just wish they just name him, you know, and, and let it be one quarterback because I play with two quarterbacks with Jerry Lee and Jordan Jefferson, guys I'm really uh, cool with. But I really didn't like the, you know, the, the splitting reps. You know, we had that during Florida game too. And all, all my whole senior year, I, didn't, I really didn't like that as a receiver because you have to try to get your timing right with those guys. But I'm hoping that, you know, that one of those guys have separated themselves and, and uh, came out on top. I know uh, JT Daniels, correct? He's a dual threat quarterback. And right. that's my, he can run a little bit. I watched him last year. He can run a little bit. I have I heard a lot of great things about Nussmeyer this, this offseason. So um, I'm just hoping the best man win and we can go out there and win some games this year. Right. Jaden Daniels, the most experienced uh, quarterback in the, in the LSU room right now. Um, you know, he came from Arizona State, obviously. Nuss Smiler, you mentioned his, his dad's uh, quarterbacks coach in, uh, for the Dallas Cowboys, I believe. Uh, so these guys are no no slouches. Uh, so whoever is the starter, I, I believe, you know, they're going to have the locker room behind them. Nuss Smiler is, is very pop- popular in the locker room with what I've seen. And, and, and Jaden has that respect as well. Uh, do you think, you know, you mentioned splitting uh, reps with Jared Lee and Jordan Jefferson. Do you think maybe they're doing the same thing right now, or you think once they name the starter, it's all one reps to the starting quarterback? I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, I hope not, but uh, it could be. But I haven't heard anything about that, but. Um, I'm just hoping that again. I'm hoping they they have one of those guys separated themselves this year and and um, and you know and take that take that lead for our for our team. But I'll say if it's anybody that I believe who who probably can get the starting job, it might be J T. Daniels because he has the experience playing. At, I believe in Arizona, Arizona State, correct? He has the experience. Uh, he's a dual threat guy. Uh, we need those kind of guys, you know, because Alabama have those guys, right? And I believe we the same. We have the same talent. We recruit the same talent, and we can get a guy who's do a threat who can throw the ball and run the ball at the same time and does a heck of a job with it. I believe that guy can uh, can win some games for us. But again, I I, I saw Nussmeyer last year. He can throw the ball well, and I've seen him run too. So, uh, you know, but he's young. You know, he's young, and um, and we'll just see. We'll see. Right, and, and, you know, you look at Brian Kelly coming from Notre Dame, and you look at uh, offense coordinator, uh, I can't pronounce his last name. I'm not going to even try it, to be honest with you. Uh, but, you know, he's coming from Cincinnati. Coach Desmond Ritter, um, quarterback, he's now playing for the Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, I, I kind of see the similarities. You know, Jaden Daniels is, is very similar to Desmond Ritter, and, he, you know, uh He's a natural runner. He's a good runner, and a lot of people don't give him enough enough credit for uh, how accurate he is. He's a very accurate quarterback. He was probably the most accurate quarterback. If yeah, he probably was one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the Pac-12 when he was at Arizona State. Now Garrett Nussmeyer, on the other hand, he kind of reminds me of a Brian Kelly quarterback. In book, Saints, uh, a quarterback, he plays for the Saints now, but he kind of reminds me of Ben Book, an improviser, a guy that can also run, like you said, and he can sling it. 
So, but like you said, he's young. He's young. So it, it, it's hard to get a grasp on the playbook. New coach. So he's also learning too. Uh, so I, I think you're right. Jane Daniels is the guy. So with your experience at LSU, um, what are some simi similarities besides the quarterback battle you see now that you, when you play played uh, back then, um, maybe the offensive line, for example, uh, or, or uh, any similarities you might see when you played back then to now, situation-wise? Well, they had a lot of depth. When I when I came in, we had a lot of depth at wide receiver, Demetrius Bird, um, Jared Mitchell, Bram LaFell, those guys, and myself, uh, Chris Mitchell. Um, they're young, though. Our team is young, uh, but we also had some veterans on our defensive line. We had a great defensive line when I was a freshman at LSU. Uh, the secondary is young right now. Uh, we had some guys like Patrick Peters and Morrison Claiborne came in. Tyre Matthew came in, played early. So we're going to need those guys to uh, contribute this year uh, for for some success on our in our program. So um, I'm just hoping that, you know, these guys are ready to play and and we have no excuses, man. We are LSU. We, we are uh, Bayou Bengals, man. And, you know, we, we, we come with that swag all the time. When we uh, in the league, when the, when the pros, they always bet against other teams like Alabama, Florida, those those players. And, and you know, when we play those guys. So I mean, we have no excuses, man. We are LSU. We're not a, a, a school where we have to uh, take our time or whatnot, but we we here we need to play and we need to play well. Right. And, and uh unfortunately running back John Emery, he would not be playing uh the first two games of the season uh due to some academic issues, which has nothing to do with his G current GBA, because apparently his current GBA is is actually pretty good. It's just something that was violated earlier when he was a freshman or sophomore, but you know, I do think Florida State is going to be a good test for us. Um, it's almost similar to when we played UCLA last year. Uh, we were heavily favored against UCLA. And I know it's a different situation uh, nowadays. You know, Cucho, you know, was heading out the door. Wasn't a good situation. Brian Kelly's coming in the door now. It seems like, you know... He's more professional, um, and he's more organized, maybe. So I'm just hoping I'm not re uh, having deja vu of last year because all I heard up to the UCLA game was how we're going to beat UCLA, and it, it should be close. But obviously that went a di different direction. I'm hearing the same thing against Florida State. So do you think – this is going to be a tough game for LSU, or or do you think LSU should win this completely? So I do not believe LSU will win it at least by two scores, but I want to piggyback off what you said about last year. I believe that team was so – our team was undisciplined. You saw it in the first game. Uh, I love Coach O. I love how he brought the national championship with us, uh, you know, won the national championship in 2019, but – I guess something changed uh, between that time. And I, I believe we were just too undisciplined last year. You know, it was too many holes in the defense and our offense, uh, too many uh, long passes, you know, too many missed tackles last year. I don't believe we'll have that this year. Brian, Brian Kelly seems like he has a, a great stranglehold on the team right now as far as discipline. Uh, so I don't, I don't believe that that'll happen, but, uh, we don't need no, any bulletin board material. Uh, both teams had a losing record last year. Uh, so, I mean, we'll see. Uh, we're young. We're still trying to figure out who the quarterback is going to be, how the offense is going to be run. So, But, again, I'm biased. I, I'm still, I still believe we're going to uh, win that game. Um, again, Florida State do recruit great talent. You know, they, uh, from, you know, they, they recruit from Alabama, LA, uh, Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. So, but, again, we got a new coaching staff. They have the same coaching staff after having a losing record. So, the only thing that stayed the same was them. 
So we'll see. And then they also have a game under their belt. You know, I, I know they played against a, a D2 school, um, and, and, you know, that school had no shot of competing in that game. But, you know, they also have a game under the belt, and Brian Kelly mentioned that earlier this week. He said, you know, Florida State, they have a game under the belt, and we don't. So and that's kind of played – he said that kind of played a factor why – he didn't want to name the starter publicly because, you know, he wanted to keep that as an advantage as how Florida State has the advantage. And, you know, what you mentioned, how Florida State has their coaching staff, you know, what, on their second year, third year with uh, Mike Norvell, whatever, however you say his name, um, that's something Brian Kelly is at a disadvantage. Brand new staff, pretty much. So... I do agree. I, I, I do think, you know, we should win about two two scores or more. But, you know, it, last year, like you said, you know, if we come out undisciplined, you know, it could end up last year. But, you know, Brian Kelly, he's not he's not that type of guy. Uh, he's he's going to keep it disciplined. And I'm, I'm ready to see what happens. Uh, so after the Florida State, you know, let's say we beat Florida State, we go down the line. How do you think this season would transpire um, after the Florida State game? Do you think this is going to be an eight or nine win season, or what would you think it's going to uh, end up as? I think it could be with this one. I mean, well, again, we always have the talent. We always have freshmen, young guys who come in who can play. Uh, we recruit the we recruit the best best guys in the country. So, but we can coach these guys well and. And keep them disciplined. We, you know, we have a great shot of winning eight or nine game uh, in SEC. I mean, that's that's, you know, I don't think we ever had a losing record until last year. Well, the last two years we had, right? And Brian Kelly haven't had a losing record ever. I don't believe. So, uh, again, I mean, it's going to be up to those guys. You know, their preparation and their discipline. So, and that's how I see that this year. And I want to go back to the Florida State thing. Um, I believe we have the advantage because those guys have a game that they put uh, that they played already, and so we get to see how those guys have played already, right? So what noted what uh, our Florida State can do is right now is is pay attention, look at the talent that we had last year, and then go off of what Notre Dame ran last year and what the Cincinnati uh, Bearcats ran last year. You know, and that can be that can be anything, right? So I believe we have the advantage by those guys having play the game already because we can see see their scheme uh they can we, we have some uh study and, and and work on but those guys florida state really don't have anything so it's, it's more of a guessing game for those guys so again they did play you know but you know they played a, a smaller school and that school gave them a, 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 a nice run at the beginning of the game um but again i think we have we have an advantage by being fresh and, and, and having something to look at. Yeah, I didn't even think of that about that. That's an excellent point uh, when you think about it. So uh, it, it's come from a person like you who, who's played the game and, and coached the game. So you, you know exactly what you're talking about. Um, so, you know, I think the keys to the game, you know, we're kind of breaking it down here. You know, you, you come out disciplined. You know, you, you play to your game plan and you do what you're supposed to do. The talent should carry us to a win against Florida State. And I think that's what we're trying to get out here. Um, and and I, that will happen. Um, and and uh, we'll see what happens. It's in the dome. We haven't lost in a dome and since when? I don't know. That's uh, that's. Uh, uh, uh. I remember them be, beating uh, Miami in the Sugar Bowl. I think that was Miami in the Sugar Bowl. No, it wasn't Miami. It was I forget who it was. But I remember them me getting recruited by LSU. So Marcus Russell, the winning bowl. Uh, Notre Dame, huh? They played Notre Dame in the Sugar Bowl. Their loss was uh, to Alabama in the national championship game. And, uh, yeah, in 2012. But we should have won that too. But, uh we 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 they, we should have never ever played Alabama though. <laughs> they, they shouldn't even get into that game. Yeah, but I'm I'm a guy who's 
and you know, you play who's on your schedule, no matter what, right? We should have been better prepared for that game anyway. I, that's just how I see. It. We had the best defense in the league, uh, in the country that year. Our offense just, you know, we just sputtered throughout that game, running the option plays against Alabama, which don't work. I know I'm going way back, but you know that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> but hopefully, you know, I, I believe we'll be better prepared for this game, man, uh, and going forward. Right, and and, and I kind of wanted to go back to that. Um, Les Miles, you know, I, I know you were recruited in the Les Miles era, so you weren't you weren't recruited by anybody that could be from Nick Saban sad before he left from LSU. But, you know, you're coached by Les Miles. So what are some maybe similarities or, or dissimilarities you see between Les Miles and what you possibly seen from Brian Kelly? Is, is there any similarities uh, like on certain levels, uh, you would say? Uh, well, I, I'll be lying to you if I knew, if I tell you I, I know what Brian Kelly is doing. Uh, I, I really like Coach Miles as a coach. He's one of the most winningest coaches in LSU history. So I, I really don't have anything bad to say, say about what he what he did. The only thing, we just ran the ball when we should have been passing, up, you know, as, as the transition was going on. So uh, I can't really say anything bad because Coach Miles had a winning record at LSU. And – that's yet to be seen with Coach Brian Kelly. So, you know, we'll see. You got to let it play out. Right. And, and I, I was just trying to look, because you look at Les Miles, you just said he had a winning record. And, um, you know, you go from Nick Saban to Les Miles, and then you go to Coach O. And I feel like all three are on a different spectrum, you know, and, and that's what I like to look at it. And then you go to Brian Kelly. So, last three coaches won a national championship at LSU. And I feel like all three are on a, on a different spectrum, good and bad. Good and bad for all three coaches. Yes, Nick Saban, you know, greatest of all time. You know, everybody has their flaws, just like everybody else. But those three coaches, last coaches of LSU, won national championships. So, you would think Brian Kelly – with the record he has, he's what the second winningest coach in college football in the in the past decade or so. Um, you would think, you know, it would it might take three to five years to win a national championship, right? You know, because that's what the timeline of each coach. The last three coaches were able to win it. Um, do you kind of agree with that? I think. Again, we have to see how the season goes right now, and what you know, what kind of team we have, but. I think without LSU being the brand it is, it wouldn't take that long. Again, we, we recruit the same players that Alabama, Ohio State, Florida get, right? Louisiana is, is the cream of the crop with, with players. It's close to Texas, right there, Alabama, Florida. So we, we recruit those guys. But, again, I don't believe that it's going to take that long if we can get the quarterback situation down pat like we did with Joe Burrow, right? We had Matt Flynn and Ryan Paralu those times, Matt Mock, right? We had Jamarcus Russell. If we can get the quarterback position down, we have everything else, right? We had a coach, we had a receiver, we had a skill player, we had an offensive line, right? We can get those guys, uh, you know, the quarterback uh, situation uh, aired out. You know, I believe we can win faster than that. But we have to see how the season goes in the game one goes. Right, and, and we don't want to move past Florida State just yet, but you're absolutely right. I, I do agree with that. You know, it, it's been like that at LSU for years. You know, LSU was always a quarterback away, you know, and and, and, and not to say that any of the quarterbacks we've had were bad. It's just, you know, they weren't on the level of Joe Burrow was. Yeah, That's a Heisman winning quarterback, and – you know, you don't even necessarily have to have that level of quarterback. You know, you look at Alabama, the success they had with the type of quarterbacks they have, uh, you know, they, they range from two, like, average quarterbacks to all the way to Heisman winning quarterbacks, and they won championships off of all of them. 
So you you're right. You you get a quarterback that knows what he's doing, that can control the offense, get his weapons the ball, right? You know, get, knows where to get his weapons the ball because that's the most important thing. You know, I was just talking about the wide receiver group we have. It, it, it's absolutely stacked. Um, it's hard not to find a weapon uh, open in this LSU offense. So I, I think, you know, you find your quarterback, knows what he's doing. He doesn't have to be anything spectacular. Just get your weapons the ball, and you just go from there. So, and, and, and normally LSU backs up their offense with a good defense. And normally we do have good defenses. Uh, defense line is going to be really good. That's one thing Coach O knew how to do was to recruit defense linemen. And, you know, LSU's always had good defense linemen. So, and great secondary. So, we'll see how it goes. Um, I, I do think we win by two scores against Florida State. Uh, I'm ready for it. Um and I'm going to the Southern game. That's going to be a great game to go to because uh, LSU Southern never played against each other. It's it's actually pretty much sold out. It was hard to find a ticket. Um, but you know it's going to be a great season. I'm looking forward to the Brian Kelly era. Um, and like you said, I, it, it shouldn't take that one to win national championship, right? I really don't. Uh, we was we was close every year. I was there. I, th- I felt like we could have won a national championship every year. Those four years I was there, you know. But things happen, scheme happen, you know, and, and people getting suspended, you know, things happen. You know, it's all about attrition. So staying healthy and, and right people on the field. And you were uh, you, your offense coordinator was uh, Cam Cameron, right? Uh, at the end of your uh, no, that was that was you were before that then. Gary Croton, the Wizard, we call him the Wizard. I don't know how old you are, but we had uh, Gary Croton. Okay, I got you. I got you. I, 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 I'm about to turn 26, but you know, <laughs> so uh, I'm uh, I'm still pretty young. Um, I didn't really follow the coaches back then, but, you know, I'll, I'll always watch LSU football since I was younger, you know, and that's why I was uh, very appreciative for you to take time out your day to come on this show because, uh, you know, I, I pretty much grew up watching you play. Uh, and, you know, you look at all the wide receivers before you, you know, you, you had your Josh Reed's early due sets, Buster Davis, Brandon LaFell, you know, you came in, and then after you, Odell, Jarvis, so on and so on. So it's amazing to see the type of wide receivers that come through. You know, you, you yourself was a five-star recruit, right? Uh, Hemp, Hempstead, Texas, right? Um, so out, right outside of Houston. Um, so it, – it's oh, it was good watching that era of LSU football and see where it is now. Um, so, is there anything else you would like to say before uh, we go ahead and get on out of here? And uh, you know, it, where 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 can people can reach you on social media and everything? Well, I'm mostly on Instagram. Call me Big Play T. Big Play T. That's what they called me when I was playing ball. Um, and at T Tolliver 80 on Twitter. Big plate. Uh, say, say it one more. Big plate T. Big, big plate T on Instagram. All right. So, so you'll give them a follow on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I uh, appreciate you coming on. Hopefully, maybe we can do it next time. I, I'm sorry we're having a little audio issue, but I had a I had to use a new computer. It's a little older, though, because my other computer, my newer computer, it wasn't working. So I do apologize for the audio. It Normally, it's way better than this. But uh, hopefully, LSU gets a dub uh, Sunday, and, and I really appreciate you for coming on this show. Appreciate you. All right. Go Tigers. All right. <laughs> And there it was. That was Terrence Solver. Um, sorry about the audio issue, guys. This is the best I could do. Um, it was 
I was trying to get it working at the last minute. It just wasn't working out. But at least he came on, and, and I really appreciate his time. He's very personable, um, and hopefully we can get him on next time. But that's going to be it for Off the Dome Sports. It's the first show back after many, many months. Uh, next week we're going to do a, a show uh, for the Saints opener. Um, hopefully do that soon. And um, I'm trying to get Bob Rose on. He, he always comes on for me, but I'm going to get Bob Rose on. Uh, we're going to go from there. Uh, so go Tigers. Who that? Football season. It's back. Let's do it. Check y'all next time.